I'd be the first to admit that I'm not the best sketcher out there, but I have picked up a few tips and tricks along the way that I hope to pass on. Years ago, everything was hand-rendered and coloured in using markers. Today, I'm designing potato peelers. I'm not good enough to draw with a sheet static, so I keep rotating the page because I find it far easier to draw lines and curves from different angles. A mixture of thin and thick lines make a drawing look more interesting, as does adding lines that help describe the form. There's loads of ways to do this, and you have to find the style that you are most comfortable with. I always think sketching should be relaxing, because I draw badly when I'm tense, so I find drawing to music helps. This method is now very old school, because it's difficult to hide mistakes, there isn't an undo button. But in terms of layout and composition, trying to get it right first time is still good practice. If you're in university and worried your sketching is letting you down, don't. These days, everyone wants to run before they can walk. It took me ages to get the hang of this, and there is no substitute for practice, even when using drawing apps and desktop packages. Sometimes, a lot of rough sketches that lead to a model will get far better results than a lot of time-consuming but pretty renders. Remember that sketching is just one of a whole range of communication tools. The greatest mistake people can make when they start sketching a presentation sheet is to put down too many lines and to draw too small. Here I've drawn about 70 more lines than I need and each curve is made up of lots of shorter lines rather than being one smooth one. Even a black outline won't save the sketch. It's overworked and ugly. Ideally, you want to touch the paper as few times as possible and make all your actions as smooth as possible. This time I only drew 18 lines and you can see that it looks better than the one above but it's still not great. So as this didn't work as well as I'd like, the fastest and simplest way is to use this as an underlay and trace the design. I'm also refining as I go, improving the form and adding detail. If you look at this peeler, you'll see the reflected light from the paper makes the underside a lighter shade than the middle. So when adding shadow, leaving a light edge on the underside of your object makes your design look better. Always look at how light behaves on an object in the real world. You have to create your design around hard points, things that already exist. In this sketch, the gape would never fit a standard peeler blade, it's too small. The same with this design, the flowing curves are nice, but the gape is too shallow. This design has been drawn small and looks okay, but when scaled up, the handle is far too fat and unrealistic. So don't draw your designs too small. Include all the parts. Too often people focus on the form, leaving out important elements that will affect the look, and then they have to redesign the piece, which wastes time. Don't design promises that cannot be made. If you sketch on coloured paper, it allows you to add highlights but you won't be able to trace. So use a pencil to rough out the layout and then once you've put your black lines on, rub out your pencil lines until you get confident.
Once I have an idea of form, I'll produce a much more refined drawing using curves. You can do this by hand or with vectors in a design program. This is what I'd then start making models from. It's very important that if this was for a real presentation, I would not draw a presentation sheet without having made several models first. You are making a presentation to communicate your idea to others, so when preparing a presentation sheet, only put on one idea. This is so viewers don't get confused and it allows you to draw people's attention to the most important points of your design. Often, I'll scan or photograph my sketch and import it into Photoshop. Here, I can tweak the composition and then I'll add backgrounds, colour and when appropriate texture and shading to each part. I'll add shadows and highlights and possibly a page number. There is nothing complicated about it. Hopefully, in very little time, you have a professional looking presentation. Even if I did this using a drawing app on a tablet, you can see that the process is exactly the same. I hope this has given you a few ideas. Thanks for watching, and if you are interested in seeing more, please hit subscribe.